Hi, in this screencast I'm going to briefly explain some of the rules that you need to follow um, when naming identifiers in your program. And uh, names, or also known as identifiers, are very important in programming. Um, anytime that we uh, refer to an image or a sound or a file on our hard drive or um, define a function, we have to give it a name. So here are some, briefly some of the rules that you need to keep in mind when you're choosing names in your program. So the first thing is that names have to begin either with a, a letter, and that can be an upper or a lowercase letter. They're also allowed to begin with an underscore, although I don't recommend using an underscore, and I'll explain that a little bit more um, in a few slides. That initial uh, letter or underscore can be followed by any sequence of letters, digits, or underscores afterwards. And these are just some examples. You can't have any spaces in your name. If I put spaces in my names, um, the, um, the Python interpreter is going to treat those as separate names or identifiers, and, and probably our program isn't going to work correctly. So keep in mind that when you name your identifiers, you don't want to put any um, spaces in them. The other thing to keep in mind is that names are case sensitive. And so if I have in my program the word color, all in lowercase, color in all, all caps, or color with a capital C, those are all considered different identifiers in my program. The other thing that you need to realize is that you can't, um, besides following the previous rules, you can't use one of the um, Python reserved words as an identifier name. And reserved words are just special words that have um, a particular meaning in our program. And so um, that's, this is the list of reserved words in Python, um, and, and that may seem a little overwhelming. You don't have to memorize all of them. Um, just keep in mind, um, as you learn them, you'll, uh, you'll remember some of them. Um, one way to, to know whether you're um, inadvertently using a reserved word is if you type it into the JES editor, and um, if you type a name and it's a reserved word, it will turn blue. So if you see that, for example, if I were to type the word class in lowercase, it would turn blue in my program. Now classes, if I stick an ES on the end, it'll turn black. If I do it in all caps, it'll be black, and that will tell me that it's a legal identifier. Now, um, along with these specific rules that, that, the, um, that the Python language requires, here are just a couple more recommendations for um, naming things in your program. So you want to use meaningful names in your programs. For example, if, I'm, if I want to be able to store today's temperature, something like the word temperature or temp would be okay. Um, you, it, temp if you don't want to type quite so many characters. But um, you don't want to go overboard shortening names or abbreviating them. For example, T would probably not be a very good name. When I go back and look at my code later, or if the grader is reading your code, um, it will be difficult to know what T is. Temperature is much more meaningful. Likewise, if I'm trying to sum up, a, say, a list of numbers, sum or total would be a reasonable uh, variable name or identifier name. Um, num is probably not as good. It's, it's a little too generic. So, and, and then again, if, I, if I'm keeping a sound object in my program, I would probably want to call it sound and not SND. Um, there's a tendency sometimes to, for students or beginning programmers to want to name their variables cute names, name them after their friends or their family or their pets, and that certainly is legal. The, the uh, uh, Python doesn't care, but that it, it'll make your program a lot harder to read. So I suggest only using um, names of pets or family members if, for example, you actually have an image that is a, is a picture of your dog or something, then you might. Um, likewise, if you're defining functions, um, say you're doing a problem out of the book, um, it's more meaningful to name it something that tells you what that function does. For example, if we were writing a function to convert an image uh, to black and white, it would be more meaningful to name it black and white than to call it problem one or something like that. And finally, I don't recommend the underscore because what can happen is if I have an arithmetic expression, for example, that has minus signs in it, it can be a little uh, hard to 
read your code. It'll be unclear whether um, you're, you're using an underscore or a, a, you're trying to subtract two separate variables. So rather than do that, if you have an identifier that's multiple words, like say you want to keep average annual rainfall, use what's called camel case. And camel case is where if you have multiple words, you stick them all together, no spaces, no underscores, but you capitalize the initial letter of each word. So average annual rainfall, you capitalize the A and the R. You also could capitalize the initial um, A, although oftentimes that's not done. Identifiers will usually start with a lowercase letter. So those are the, the rules and good practices that you should follow when you use names in your program. It'll make your, your programming go much more smoothly. Thanks for listening.